Kobo, I'm 17 years old. I've always been very fortunate to be a healthy girl. Then all of a sudden, I was constantly in and out of the doctor. From having nosebleeds so bad, I couldn't sleep horizontally anymore. I was getting MRIs done as a 10-year-old. I had heart palpitations, and I had to use a heart monitor for several weeks because they didn't know what was going on. I was really scared. So one time, my mom did tell the doctor, like, oh, well, we do live next to an oil well. I don't know if that has anything to do with this. And I remember vividly the doctor took off his glasses and put them on his head and looked at us and said, you need to move. The oil industry has been drilling in LA for 100 years. So there's between 850 and 1,000 active oil wells in Los Angeles City and near 5,000 in Los Angeles County. The oil industry would argue that they've been here for a long time and they've been drilling safely. We continue to see that there is what we call people living in sacrifice zones, where regulatory agencies and the oil industry has just decided we're going to operate here with impunity. A lot of people don't even realize that there is an oil drilling site right in their neighborhood. They just see the hedges and they think, oh, maybe it's an abandoned lot or it's some other facility. People don't even um, think about the possibility of it being a very toxic industrial land use. Things that come out of wells are benzene, toluene, ethylene, and xylene. They're you know, known carcinogens. They're known reproductive toxins. So right here is the main doors to the Alanco oil well. But once you get closer, you start noticing the signs that they have. So this facility contains one or more chemical known, chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer, birth defects, and reproductive harm. And it's 30 feet away from homes. So as you can see, this facility is extremely close to residential homes. It's so close, you could literally put one hand on a bedroom window and your other hand on the drill site wall. This is inappropriate land use anywhere in any community. It's definitely wrong and it's a, it's a question of environmental justice. So the only warning we have about the well are these little yellow things. Um, it does say warning petroleum pipeline, but if you were to walk by, you wouldn't even pay attention because it's so small and doesn't grab your attention. I think the fundamental question with oil drilling is whether it's compatible with the residential living. We know that there's respiratory harm from living near a well. Should there be an oil well across the street from a school, a playground, a hospital? Um, and I think that's a question that we're contending with. So that's my old apartment building. I lived there for 10 years with my family. And right here is the Alanco oil site. Under those red things, they have 21 wells. and. Even if you look at it from here, it seems pretty harmless. There's nothing very scary looking. But the damage it does, it's, it's horrible. Our study found that if you live 1,500 feet or closer to an active oil well, that your chances of having physician-diagnosed asthma are much higher than if you lived in the city or county of LA outside of that perimeter. Here in LA, a number of my patients live right next to oil wells. A lot of kids are coming wheezing, they have asthma. Oh, I know, listen to the lungs. They have headaches, they have menstrual problems, and they have seen gynecologists, they have seen neurologists. Their whole development is impacted. And everybody was like, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's this. But in reality, it was the oil well that was causing all these problems. So I had an asthma attack yesterday and I had to go to the ER and my mom just always told me to keep them on for 24 hours in case it does come back, I can go in a lot easier. Asthma is not a curable condition. So Nayeli probably will have asthma through her life. It is not something that will completely resolve. So these are the medications I take every day or if not every day on a frequent basis. And then these are all other medications I've had to take over the years. And as a big sister, it's obviously very terrible to see. I don't want her to see anyone I love in any pain or anyone. And what's even more frustrating is that this was preventable. I realized that it was time to do something when my entire community was being sick and it was a common conversation starter for parents to say, my daughter had a nosebleed last night. Did your son have one too? 
I began my activism at the age of nine and I didn't even know it was considered activism. I just wanted to get my community out there so we can share our stories and get something done. Environmental justice is racial justice. I've seen her organize the community, which is unbelievable. Seeing her live by her principles every day, I mean, that's probably the most inspiring thing I've seen her do. I think of my activism as my full-time job. I tend to put it before school. I find it a lot more meaningful. It's horrible that this is not only my reality, but my community's reality. The mission of Stand LA is to end oil drilling in Los Angeles, to make sure that people are safe where they live. We know that this is an inherently dangerous practice that happens dangerously close to people, for which we have a perfectly safe alternative in solar and wind. That's the transformation we want to bring to LA. It was built on oil, but we can build it on justice and health. People have told me, you're just a little girl, like you don't know what you're talking about. Leave it to the scientists and stuff. And okay, you're right. I don't know all the chemicals and the exact procedures and all these fancy names, but I know my story and I know my community story and that's what I'm gonna share. Nayeli Kobo, founding member of South Los Angeles Youth Leadership Coalition and also she's a member of Stan LA. To know that behind her are many other young folks who are just as equally dedicated and impacted and have a powerful voice as well. And I think that's what she does for all of us. So I'm very proud to say because of her efforts, Alan Go has been shut down for four and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> I remember vividly my mom saying Alan Go shut down. So I was so happy that I could finally breathe and open the windows and go outside and play is I think about future generations that when they're reading their history books, they read about urban oil drilling and think it's ridiculous that it was even happening. That's what my dream is, that nobody will ever have to go through what I went through, that nobody has to grow up next to the well as being their neighbor or in the backyard. That's why I fight.